welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to take a look at the best ways to get old bad capacitors, uh, capacitors off of uh, off of old motherboards. As you can see, we've got three of them here. Now you got to remember, motherboard is like eight, ten, twelve layers thick. It's it's uh, it's pretty pretty densely populated, and there's a whole lot going on uh, in uh, in between the layers so the problem <clears throat> the trick is to get these things out without ripping the feed through connectors off so we're going to take a look at it the first first way we're going to try is with Sutterwick this stuff uh, this has been around for eons, and it, it works well. <clears throat> it works well in many situations. Uh, the trick with it is to make sure that you put some uh, flux on there, so that you got something to work with. All right, let's turn this thing over. Here's one of our caps. We'll work on this one right now. Uh, you want to iron with a decent amount of heat to it because one of the one of the reasons this is very difficult is because in one of the layers in here in this board is going to be all ground and it will suck up heat quickly. Uh, so you need a iron with a fair tip and goodly amount of goodly amount of reserve heat when you're doing this with solder wick the best way is to add a little bit to the joint that you want to take apart here make sure I've got the right ones uh, I didn't, okay. <laughs> Which would be here and here. That sort of gets it going, gets it started. So we'll take our solder wick, put it down here, heat it up, and give it a few seconds. And you can see it, I don't know, you probably can't see it in the video, but it'll, the solder will start wicking up and traveling up the up the wick itself there so you want to keep going backwards get it good and new spot to it each time that you put it on there then we take a look at it and see what we've got. This is so small, there's no way I'm going to be able to get a picture in the camera, I don't think. But, well, maybe. Let's take it and try it here. As you can see, well, if you can see it, very difficult to see there. really didn't appear to do a lot as far as cleaning out the holes go but we'll give it a tug and see if we can tug it out of there one thing you definitely do not want to do is just pull because that will definitely do it okay that'll rip things out well that didn't help at all Let's give it one more shot. As you can tell, this is if this was a production environment, already this does not appear to be the correct way to do this. Give it a little more heat. You also don't want to heat the thing up to the point where you melt the board either.
Oh boy, okay. Give it some more. Oh, this stuff gets really hot. All right, that's about as much as I want to do on that. So we'll give it another another tug here. No, that's the leads are not wiggling. So in order to complete this one, you have to sort of heat it and wiggle it like this, being very careful not to pull the lands out because if you do there's a really good chance you're not going to get it back in and working. Let's make sure this one is marked. It is. The negative side is marked with a bar. We got it out. We know it's good. Don't even have to test it. I mean, we can. We'll give it a shot here and see what it says, just for the fun of it. Um, I guarantee it's going to be bad. It might even be completely open because it's blown its guts right out the top. And it says two hundred and nineteen microfarads at one point nine ohms. This is an eighteen hundred microfarad capacitor at six point three volts. So yeah. Completely out of spec. Uh, let's see. If I've got, yeah, I do. I got flux off here. Okay. I'm at work, so I don't really have all of my neat little tools that I have at home here, like scrubby brushes and things. Yeah, that flux is kind of gooey. I got to get some better flux. All right, so that one's 1800. That one's 1800. Okay, these are all 1800, so we can just pull them out. All right, so there's one way with Soderwick. It works, but it's not great. All right, let's try another way here, and that's with one of these. This is a solder sucker. It works. Um, and these are really useful if they're good enough to do the job. This one I have a, it's not a great tip, but it's a fair tip in there. Um, and they, the nice thing about these is they will, they do have a tendency to actually clear the holes out pretty well. However, going through this many layers on a board, hmm, not, not altogether sure how well that's going to work. But let's, uh, well, I do because I've done this a thousand times, but let's find out. Make sure that my tip is up here. Oh, I forgot. With this method, too, also, you want to add a little bit. Add a little bit of solder just to get it sort of started. And then take your Solder gun, get it on there, melt it, wiggle it around, and suck. You wiggle it around so you can feel the edges of the uh, of the pin hitting the sides of the. of the hole. And when you can feel that, then you give it a... you know that you've got it... Okay, so what we can see here 
is that the pointing device, this one came loose over on this side. And that came loose because that's just, that's the pin. Uh, that would be the plus side of this. So it's, it's only going through that LAN and probably connected with one, one in the middle or something like that between layers. This one is the negative side and it's going to be ground. It takes a lot more heat to get past that grounding because it absorbs the heat from the from the gun and it, you can't really get them to do that so what you do is on this last one you get it going and you hold on to the on the other side and you can feel it and you keep it going around in circles and sock and pull and just give it a little bit of a tug and out it'll come and that hole's still not clean but it came out without ripping anything out so that method works and quite frankly it's a lot quicker uh, quite a bit quicker turn on the little noise machine over there now that that um, now that that hole the thing is out of there I can go to the hole heat it up pretty good and maybe Yeah, suck the hole up clean. So that hole's clean. And <clears throat> then the one we used with the solder wick. Make sure that hole's clean so I can move it back in. Alright, so there's two ways. The solder wick worked, took quite a while, and you had to reheat it and take it out. The solder sucker worked worked nicely. Um, still you had to pull on it. And then we got one more cap over here, and we're going to try this, this method. This is a uh, desoldering gun for surface mounts. A variable heat and a variable amount of uh, blow coming out the end of it. It's very, very hot. I've got it set on about 344 degrees Celsius right now. And what we're going to do is we are just going to heat this right here. Until we see the solder start to maybe flow just a little bit. The problem with this method is, depending on the board, you can burn and blister the board very easily. And I'm starting to see that happen right now. And this thing is not, not coming out of there at all. Not even close. I'm going to blister that board. I don't want to do that. So, that method doesn't work. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to this method with the solder sucker. And oh, you're all going, wait a minute, you said you had to. Prime them up a little bit. Well, you do, and I just forgot. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just do it this way. The fourth method, and or old style method, is just to hold on to your component from the other side and heat up both of the legs and pull. That works quick. It's very fast. It has a problem, though, in that you now have two full holes. You have to clean those holes out. Well, the one way, of course, is with the solder wick. Still got a little bit of goo on there. We'll try this. See if the solder wick will suck the hole dry. It does. 
and the other hole no it's not there okay they're both empty all right so that worked we got all three of them out of there now what have we learned the solder wick method works it's slower more tedious uh, and you you end up still having to pull the part out the other method with the desoldering gun it works works very well and for the most part you can get it to the point where you can just pull the thing out by itself or at least one lead you can always do if, as long as there isn't too much of a ground on the other one you could do it too but if you, the, the the flying lead that's only on the power supply or whatever it'll come off great and also this helps clean out the holes after you get done the third method is just to heat up both of them and pull it straight out using a soldering iron that's the old, old timey, old fashioned method. The old, that method, you stand, you risk a chance of ripping the flow throughs off or the feed throughs off of the inside of the board. So it comes down to it. There's no, there's no substitute for the right equipment and a solder sucker. Good solder sucker is the way to go. These guys not on this they just there's just not enough there and the, the hole the holes are too big and they get all burnt up and these work good on single-sided boards uh, with big feed-through components and stuff like that if that's all you've got but still the right equipment makes all the difference and we found this doesn't work unless you want to destroy a board this is made for pulling off things like that, or this, or this, or little capacitors, or whatever. You heat it up, you can pull them off. It's not made to take things off feed-throughs. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, um, give me a thumbs up. Or whatever. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.